AWS has a service called IAM or Identity and Access Management that allows us to control access to all AWS services. In this video, I'm going to explain what IAM roles and policies are and show you how to set them up to give an EC2 instance access to other AWS services. So let's say you have a developer and you want to allow that developer access to your AWS account so they can set up new EC2 instances. You can just navigate to the IAM console in AWS and create a brand new user and specify that this new user is only able to create new EC2 instances on this AWS account. And I think this is a fairly simple concept to grasp that a user could log in to AWS with a username and password and have access to some of the services. And using IAM, we can specify exactly what that user can or can't do. But what if we're not talking about a real human being that uses a username and password? What if I want to allow an EC2 instance, which is one AWS service, to access files within an S3 bucket, which is a completely different AWS service? Well, for that, we can use IAM roles. Let's say we have an EC2 instance set up and maybe we need this instance to be able to download files from an S3 bucket and maybe send some logs to CloudWatch. And these are both AWS services. So we should be able to just access these, but by default, everything is locked down and the EC2 instance can't access anything. So we need to use IAM policies and roles to allow the EC2 instance to access these other services. Policies define which service can be accessed and the exact actions that we're allowing on that service. So we can create a policy that allows something to download files from a specific S3 bucket or a policy that allows something to send logs to CloudWatch. Then we can create an IAM role and assign one or more policies to that role. And a role is very similar to a user, but instead of creating a user that has a real person log in with a username and password, we can create a role and assign that directly to our EC2 instance. Once the IAM role is assigned to the EC2 instance, it will have access to these services as we defined in the policies. And we can easily assign this role to as many EC2 instances as we want and modify it later on. Or we can completely revoke that role and take away access to these services. Let's take a look at how to set up a policy for an S3 bucket and CloudWatch logs and assign that to a role and then assign that role to an EC2 instance. And to start with, uh, I'm going to set up the policy for the S3 bucket. And before I do that, I'm just going to create a quick bucket. So I'm in the S3 console here uh, and I'm just going to create a brand new bucket and give this a unique name. My I am demo bucket thing. Uh, and the important thing here is that I actually get the name of the bucket because when we create the policy, we're going to specify access to this specific bucket. So I'm just going to copy that and create the new bucket. And then I'm going to navigate over to IAM because this is where we can set up the policies and roles and users and groups and a whole bunch of other IAM things. We're just going to focus on the policies and roles for this video, though. So if I go into policies, this is where I'm going to define the rules. This is where I'm going to say uh, something is allowed to read or write to this S3 bucket. So there are a bunch of policies already in here. These will be policies that maybe I've made or maybe ones that exist already that come from AWS. I'm just going to go and create a brand new policy right now for this very specific S3 bucket and when we go to create a policy we get two different editors here there's the visual editor which we're going to go through and there's the json editor and when we create a policy all the rules are defined in a json data structure so if you know how to write the rules in json you can just come in here and it's a bit of a quicker process uh, but i think it's a little bit easier to use the visual editor because it gives you checkboxes and things and just makes it a little bit easier so first we're going to go to the service and the service we're going to define the rules for are s3 buckets we're going to allow some access to that bucket uh, once we select S3, here are all the different things we can do to an S3 bucket. And if we actually expand these, there's a lot of things you can do with an S3 bucket. Um, for this, uh, maybe we'll just allow get object. That means that my EC2 instance can get a file from the S3 bucket and put object. So the bucket is allowed to uh, add a new file to the bucket and then get that file back later on and that's it. So that's good enough for now. And then resources here, we want to specify that it can only do this to a very specific S3 bucket. We want to specify the bare minimum access that we possibly can for security reasons and so we don't accidentally access other buckets. So I could say that it's allowed to get and put objects to every single S3 bucket within this account, but we always want to go more specific and add an ARN. 
And right here, it's just asking for the bucket name. So I'm saying that only, it can only put objects and get objects from this bucket, but I'm gonna allow it to put any object and get any object from this bucket. And then I'll just add that in here. Um, and that's all we need. So we are allowing uh, getting objects and putting objects on, on this specific S3 bucket. And if I check the JSON editor, we'll be able to see that this is what the JSON output looks like. So it's just specifying uh, these actions are allowed on this resource, this bucket. Uh, but if I go back to the visual editor here and I scroll down, it'll say next uh, tag. So we could add some tags if we want. I'm not going to add any tags right now. Uh, we can review this and we should just give this a good name. So um, uh, put and get, oh no, the name has to be alphanumeric. I don't know. Uh, uh, get put objects. That's just the bucket name. And then I give this a good description. I don't know, get and put objects on that bucket for the demo okay good enough so i'm going to create this new policy and this is just the rules this is saying that whatever has this policy whatever role or user or whatever has this policy is allowed to now get objects and put objects on that specific s3 bucket so now that i have that policy if i want to give that policy if i want to give those permissions to an ec2 instance i can now go and create a role and this is what we assign to the actual service, in this case, the EC2 instance. So I'm gonna create a brand new role here. And by default at the top, uh, it has the common use cases. EC2 is at the very top because we usually want to allow our virtual machines to access other services. Uh, Lambda's also right up there because it's very similar to EC2. So we're just gonna select EC2. We're creating a role for an EC2 instance. And then in this permissions bit here, we're saying what that EC2 instance can do. So I'm just gonna search for that policy that I created and there it is right there and we can see all the details about it. We can even see the JSON output. Uh, so I'm just gonna select this one. And also we can look through all the different policies that we get given to us by AWS. And there are some that are handy that we can just use out of the box to access services like CloudWatch, for example. So if I search for CloudWatch, if I want my EC2 instance to be able to send logs to CloudWatch so I don't have to log on to the EC2 instance to see all of the logs, um, I might wanna use this CloudWatch service, but it needs permission to do that. So if I search for CloudWatch and scroll down here, let's see, there should be, yeah, CloudWatch agent server policy. And if I expand this, you can see the JSON output um, does a couple of things. But basically this policy made by AWS, it's already set up when you have your account. This is the policy that's required in order for EC2 instances to use the CloudWatch agent that you can install on the EC2 instance to easily send logs to CloudWatch. So we can add both of those policies here. So I've selected my custom one, I've selected this built-in one, and uh, I'll go next, add tags, I'm gonna skip this, review, I'll give it a role name. Um, this is gonna apply just to uh, very specific EC2 instances that are probably hosting a specific application that's gonna access that specific bucket. So um, you usually give this a more specific name. Uh, my demo app is probably good right now. Um, yeah, create that role. So I have that role set up, I have the policy set up and anything with that role will be able to access that S3 bucket and also access CloudWatch. Uh, so now all I have to do is go into EC2 and create a new EC2 instance. And then I can assign that IAM role to that instance and it'll be able to access those things. So I'm gonna launch a new instance here and I can select any of these. I'm just gonna select Amazon Linux 2, uh, T2 Micro, why not? And then when we go to the configuration details, uh, there's a bunch of different things that we can set here. The only thing that I'm interested in right now is this IAM role section. So as we're setting up a brand new EC2 instance, we can assign one of the roles. So I'm gonna go to, uh, I can't even remember what I called it, demo something, yeah, my demo app, there we go. So there's the role I just created, I'm gonna assign that to the EC2 instance, and once I set up this instance, it'll have access to those things. And I'm not actually gonna go through these steps, I'm not gonna show you how to actually access the S3 bucket or send logs to CloudWatch, I'll save those for other videos, but if I create this instance now, it will have access to those services, and that's the important part. If I want to set up CloudWatch, if I want to access that S3 bucket, this EC2 instance now has access to those things. That's it for this video, but stay tuned for more videos on cloud computing. That pain inside, don't wanna feel it. So I pull up inside my cup and I just sit till I can't feel it